And now, here's your host, Stephanie Phelps. Oh, it's no wrong. You can put your hands together. There's no harm in it. Come on. I need someone, somebody to help me come back, turn my life around. We can have a little church in there. You don't have to have a suit on. Come on, this thing. I can't. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Jesus, your love. Hallelujah. That's all. It gets me high. It gets me high. Now, the kind of how you talking about this? Hi, everybody. It's time for another look. I'm Stephanie Phelps here with Anthony hey, Brown. How you hey, doing? Anthony, how are you? I'm here. So it's just you and me yeah. on this show for a very, very special, special show. show. Yeah. Yes. You know, we have with us on this show, we're going to do a whole show with none other than seven time Grammy Award winning. Uh, Multi artist, yeah, I guess. Your, he's your cousin. He's my cousin. And your nephew. Okay. And, and your that, friend. that would be <laughs> Kirk Franklin. So, uh, Kirk, it is just so wonderful to have you here. I can't Thank believe you. you're sitting here talking to well, me. Well, I'm so. having a good time. I'm yeah. having a good time. And, and yeah. before the cameras were rolling, people need to know I've been trying to figure out how to sit in this seat because I'm a little dude. <laughs> and I've been trying to sit up here to look cool because if I sit back here, yeah, he goes. See, my he feet go swing. Oh, okay. My feet swing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not too cool for that's, a grown man. That's not like we did whole interval. Yes, well, you know, I was raised in, in Texas, and so you know. <laughs> how y'all doing? Thank y'all for having me. Welcome to Cleveland. Yeah, Thank y'all for having how, me. How are you liking it here so far? Well, you know, I have some friends that live here, and so I've been here quite a few times. Um, I forget the area. There's an area down by like the river. Where, where the flats. Like, is that what it's called when it's really it likes restaurants and different things yeah, in there? Yeah, the flats. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. love it, love it, man. It's a beautiful place. Okay. Beautiful oh. place. I love it. Oh, you yeah, come on and get you some of it then. Okay. <laughs> Thank well, you. you know what? We're going to get started. We just want to find out, you know, a lot about you. We know that you're here to plug your book, but yes. we are going to get to that. I feel like we have uh, plenty of time, but before right. too much of it slips away, want to uh, get started and just uh, talk about. Uh, Kirk and uh, your, your your growing up years. I, I understand you're a pretty street wise, uh, street savvy uh, person. But mm. let's start from the beginning. Mm. Well, um, tell me what you'd like to know. Do you do you want to know um, uh, how I started with music, or you want to know way before? Way before. Let's way, go back to January 26, 1970. At oh, least Jesus. with uh, I'm Rude. And I so think. you got to just tell the age. <laughs> oh, because I'm the same age, so I can go there. Oh. <laughs> It's really 19, it, it was the end of this, no. The, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I was, um, I was adopted, uh, was, I was legally adopted by a 64-year-old uh, woman who was a widow, um, and uh, her name is Gertrude, mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. she raised me uh, on her social security check, and uh, we used to recycle uh, newspapers and beer cans to kind of keep the lights on and pay for piano lessons. Mm -hmm. um, my my biological father uh, was never in the picture. Um, I, I saw him a couple of times. I saw him a few times. Uh, one time that I can definitely remember was when his father died. I was around about six, and I never forget him coming to get me and for the funeral. And uh, he took me. He took me. He took me to go get a haircut. Mm -hmm. And so that's like one of the main things that I remember my father ever doing for me was giving me a haircut. At the, paying for me a haircut at six and after that I don't remember really anything else uh, I, I remember one or two times when he was in town he would maybe come to see me or anything like that. and and and, um, and then I also remember um, my mom uh, Gertrude saying to me that she has said to him you know you know that he really needs you you know your son really needs you and in, involved in his life and you know it just never came to mm -hmm. anything and then my um, my real mother uh, she was in and out a lot, and so she felt like a distant aunt. She kind of felt more like a big sister. And, and you know, there are so many people watching your show, which, which, which I know amazing of people watching it, and I probably have my same story that, mm -hmm. you know, in the African-American community, and, and I talk a lot about it in the book about, uh, now, this is not an autobiography. Right. This is right. more of a, a, really a blueprint for people 
that or are facing advice. different type of storms mm -hmm. and right. trying to use my life lessons and the lessons mm -hmm. of other people that right. I've had a chance mm -hmm. to encounter. Some some of the greatest, smartest people and some of the most dumbest, ignorant people. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say ignorant, I said ignorant. Ignorant, yes. Ignorant. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? It's you can difference. learn. And, and you can learn great lessons from both. Right. You can right. really learn great lessons from yeah. both. You know, you yeah. can learn what to do and what not to do. And um, my biological mother, um, I, I talk about in the book that, that when you are a child and you are seeing your, your mother every now and then, it, it's kind of like a wound that never really does heal. Mm. Where in, in, in different races, when you are adopted, there's not that that in and out of the biological. You know, a lot of that happens in the African American community. I mean, many African American people were raised by their grandmama, but their mama still came right, by. Mama right. came by yeah, what's going yeah, on. yeah, your mama came by, mm -hmm. maybe pick up, take you to the zoo, take you to the park, and then come back. And you know, sometimes, well, for me, that left an open wound of always, you know. The, the healing, where's yeah, the healing? Yeah, why am I not good enough to go with you? What's right. wrong with me? Right. And, 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 and so, you know, I was raised with a lot of esteem issues mm -hmm. and, you know, struggled with them for most of my life and still, you know, still even now I have some, some residue. Right. And so, you know, I talk about how in the book, why it's so important f for parents to realize mm -hmm. that parenting is not an option. So, we're, you know, what well, we're going to get to like all of that She's stuff, stop at talking at about the least right in the second half. Well, what I want to do is just, you know, like, like yeah. when we're talking about something, yeah, just kind of hit it, but you know, we can talk about whatever y'all okay. want to talk Tell me about yeah. growing up in Fort Wayne, Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas, yeah. yeah. What was it like growing up in, in, in Texas and well, Fort Worth and going to high school? Yeah, well, well, you know, uh, being raised by Gertrude, and again, she being an older she woman. She was 64. She was 64, and I was four when she adopted me. So the whole neighborhood, the whole block, it was kind of people her age. So there were not a lot of kids. Mm. I didn't have a lot of friends. Oh, okay. and, and so, okay. you know, I had, uh, as a child, I developed very early on that my friend really became that piano and the relationship with the Lord that I saw Gertrude walk. So she had you take piano lessons at when age you were four. four starting at age four, four. and then you could uh read sight and, read and i was doing all of that play music by somebody go get a keyboard somebody go get a keyboard right. well, yeah but well, but but at the same time i'll never forget going to piano lessons on friday mm -hmm. going up to miss jackson's house and, and and having to walk by other kids playing football and I, i'll never forget one time some uh like in the hood there's a game you play called throw up tackle and I don't know if you ever heard of that game, but but it it's it, it's like playing football in the middle of the streets. And instead of having a quarterback, if somebody catches the ball, you'll just throw it up. And oh. then whoever grabs it, you'll run and try to get a touchdown. Okay. And then you Hence get tackled. The yeah. And then a the person that okay. tackles you can then throw up the ball and you know. Mm -hmm. okay. And so and so I'll never forget going one day and going to piano lessons, you know, you know, just like the little nerd, you know, we were at the school bag, <laughs> you know, walking past, you know, you know, you know, to Trey Trey and Raekwon and them. And they were all playing football and I tried to get out there and tried to catch the ball. And you talk about comedy. You talk about humor, and, and, and I just never, you know, I always remember that I was always the one being laughed at. I was always one trying so hard to be like the other fellas, uh -huh. and just never could do it. So is that why you became maybe so streetwise, or you wanted to be maybe tougher, you know, yeah. to have that exterior, you're yeah. putting on that mask yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, and, and, and when something's not organic for you, then you overdo it. Okay. And so what I did, you know, you know, so, you know, because when you're trying to fit in, you know, it's like extreme instead of being natural. So when it's time to, you know, to, to try drugs, it's like, I really, really, really try. When it's time to drink, it's like, you know, you know I, really, I really, 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 really yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when it was time to, to do something bad, I was the one like, oh, let's go do something bad, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. Just over the top. Just over the top. Just look hurt. Just okay. look hurt. You're like, we think, Lord, that go look hurt, you know, <laughs> just because I was just, because, because I wanted to fit in. Okay, so tell me real quick about um, you starting the group. That you, you all you started your first singing group in high school. Yes, 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 yes. It was a group called the Humble Hearts. The Humble yeah. Hearts. Like and, the uh, name. It, well, it was. Well, that's, it's <laughs> it's a little cheesy now. And and and, uh, it, and as it, it was a me and two guys. And it's funny because one of the guys' mom made us some, some sweatshirts, and it was like a heart uh -oh. with some with some with some legs and some knees praying. Just I know, just cheesy, just cheesy. A picture of a well, heart. You don't with understand some legs. that was in the eighties, though. So that was for the moment. Yeah, but, but if I came in with something like that now, we'd have right. To I would laugh at you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm be honest, I was yeah. at you. A heart with some with some legs and hands praying like what did he got? And there probably some iron on too, wasn't it? Yeah. See? I'm, I'm telling you, out of eighty, because nobody could sew like that back. You know, you know. See, see, yeah, us. Um, your singer, uh, what singer? Yes, your singer sewing machine couldn't do that back in the oh, day. Oh, okay, okay. And you know, well, one one of the guys in the group was David Mann, who was now Mr. Brown on on uh, uh, 
on Meet, Meet the, the Browns. Meet the Browns. Yeah. Oh, Meet the Browns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yes, so, yes. you okay. know, that was kind of the beginning of the whole singing group and the family and all of that. Okay. okay. Well, well yeah. you know what? We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then uh, when we come back, we we're going to no talk about the family, your near-death experience, the music business. Let's also talk about Tawana. When we get back, you know, let's also talk about Tawana. That's my sister. All right, then. Okay. So stay with us. We'll be right back with another 